Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you for joining me today. I am embarking on a video series that I never really thought I would do and I'm, I'm not sure I'm that prepared for it, but I thought, you know, 10 years um, has passed since we started 60 and Me, and I really haven't shared too much about myself with you. And I did a short video a little while ago asking for questions and I was overwhelmed totally overwhelmed. You're, first of all, by the number of questions, um, thank you, every single person that uh, left a, a thought or a question, but also for the nice comments that people left along the way. And uh, I just cannot tell you what it means to me. I mean, I have like, you know, put a lot of work into 60 and Me over the last 10 years. And I knew from the beginning that it was important. I knew it was my karma. I knew it was my job to do this. And as I answer some of the questions, I think you'll start to see, you know, why um, I feel that I've found the right venue, the right format for sharing, and why I think it's so important. You know, I think older women are amazingly complex and beautiful and strong. And so my own experience, I'm sure, is reflected in yours. So that's the first thing I want to say is that everything I talk about here, even though the, some of the things will be quite personal and you know factual, because that's a lot of you asked me like facts, like where were you born? You know, what about your family? And you know, questions about my life that um, you know I want to answer those. I mean, you asked me the questions and I want to ask answer them, but at the same time, I want you to feel like we are. You know, we're in this together and that everything I've gone through is equally, um, you know, applicable to your life too. So I have, you know, we have communities all over the place and I've got, I'm just sorting out my Instagram versus YouTube. Um, we have a, almost 200,000 women now on YouTube um, here on our, our subscription for YouTube. And that is amazing. That's an incredible number. And so I'm, uh, I spent a lot of time on uh, looking at the questions that our YouTube community uh, put forward. And I decided I was going to, do it chronologically, like I was born here, I did that. And, um, you know, and I, then I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to answer the questions and do them in a way that, um, you know, that, that answers specifically what you asked. But I will do a little bit of teeny bit of background at the very beginning, because a lot of people did ask, you know, where were you born? What was your childhood like? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Um, you know, kind of what was the story of your life? And uh, you know, until until you were an adult. And that's a big one, and that's probably going to take a little bit of time, but you know, I'm going to just talk. <laughs> I'm just going to chat, and uh, hopefully I'll give you enough of an insight into my childhood and my early days that um, I can then go into more questions about my preferences and my, my values and things that are important. Anyway, my life. I was born um, in on November the 10th, 1948, in Acton in London, it's West London. Um, I, I, was, um, I was born there in Queen Charlotte's Hospital, which has actually now been completely redesigned and demolished, I think, but it's like, it's one of those places that has a classic hospital in, in London, Queen Charlotte's Hospital. And uh, my mom, her name was Doris, and she had me in that, in that hospital. Um, and, and she'd been married to my dad for like, I think about three years, just after the war, two years after the war. So it was very much a war culture and lots of children were being born. And it was very, um, you know, sort of very, um, oh, I don't know, dynamic time. So um, I was raised in, in London until I was eight years old and we lived in a house. Um, I've been back to see it actually. I, I walked back there and um, we lived in a house that was in a, a kind of industrial area. There were factories behind my house, but I never saw them. I only remember the hollyhocks in the garden. And um, it was funny when I went back, I saw that if I'd looked up, there were factories all around us and it was very urban. But as a child, I didn't see that. So I had two brothers. Um, we were all born 14 months apart. So my mom had three kids under four. And so it was a busy life. But my dad, I'll give you a bit of background on my dad because I think it's important to my life. And um, he um, was well, obviously a big part of my life, but the, he had some challenges. The main challenge was he went into the war when he was, I think, 20, 18 years old, uh, World War II. And he served abroad. I think he had some very, very traumatic things that happened to him, as you do. You're 18. Well, how do you live through that somehow? And when he came out when he was 24, he was a different person and he never recovered, I think, from the losses and from the sadness and from the search for himself. I don't think he ever had a chance, like so many men who went to the Second World War, to, to actually define what was important to him. 
he was an engineer. He actually fixed cars, and he, that's why he was so valuable during the, the war. He was very busy. Um, and when he came out of the army, that was the job he took on with, with cars. And, and, and he was a mechanic, uh, you know, on sort of English model cars. Very good. He was a bus driver for a while, too, I think. But, you know, my dad was very much a, a lost soul like so many people were. So he moved us around a lot. And that actually is pretty significant to my life. So we moved uh, to Canada uh, at the age of eight. My dad decided to, um, to, that we would emigrate to Canada. And he had a job lined up. It was one of the times in, in English UK history where a lot of people were offered positions abroad in the, you know, in the Commonwealth countries to, to, to work. Um, and so that we were given a home and he was given a job and we moved, we went on a boat. It was the Queen, I think it was the Queen Elizabeth Cunard. It was like an old, old, I mean, now it's old, old ship. This is like 70 years ago, right? Or 60, some two years ago. And um, it, I think it sunk or it was just demolished by fire. Anywho. <laughs> something happened to it but it was a beautiful ship and it really started my passion for travel and someone did ask that question i think it was you know when did you when did your passion for travel begin it was then when i was eight got to canada it was in a place called north bay ontario which many of you are going to go oh north bay i know that because it's way north in, in ontario um up by the the great lake or the um the, what do they call it? a thousand lakes and Nip lake nipissing was just where i lived little house across the street from the beach creek ran behind our house it was just gorgeous and uh, yeah that was my early childhood and uh, of course we were super uh, poor we didn't have any money at all um, our, our little house was uh, incredibly basic um, yeah I'll tell you some of the stories <laughs> there um, gosh you know and I knew when I started this it was going to get emotional and that's how it's going to be because your childhood is so so important but anyway uh, and, it, and it shapes you in so many different ways so um, our house was tiny. We had two bedrooms. My mom and dad had one bedroom. My two brothers and I had the other bedroom. We slept in the same bed, big bed. Um, we had no refrigerator. Um, we had um, double glazing on the windows. So we were able to put food between the double glazing, so like our butter and uh, some great memories of different kinds of food in those days. But, um, you know, we didn't have any fancy furniture. We didn't have any, you know, our house was, it was cozy. But the winters in North in North Bay were, were freezing cold, and we didn't have terribly good heating. So it was a it was a basic life. It was kind of tough. My mom used to hide the cookies. I mean, it was like that, you know. And so my relationship with money at the very beginning was quite um, uh, how would you say? I was very cautious, conscious of not having money and having to be careful with money, and to being independent and um, doing things for myself and being strong. And the story, of course, is that my dad, I need my, my little fan, I do have a fan here, because it's hot today, it's a really hot day. Um, my dad um, uh, decided that he wanted to give us a better life. And so we came back to England one time, uh, like a very short trip, but then it wasn't right. So we, we went back to Canada and moved to Toronto. And it's my little fan, by the way, isn't it cute? I picked it up yesterday in the market. Um, anyway, and we moved to Toronto. And uh, it was in April. So my dad managed to move us every year of my life when he, we were together uh, in April to a new school. You know, so landing in April in a new school, that gave you unique skills in terms of, you know, coping and um, learning to help, made how to make friends, how to be a bit of a, a cam um, chameleon how to get friends with the teachers, you know, how to get on the side of the, of, the, of the clique so that you didn't, so that you fit in. And so I got, became good with people and I love people. I mean, I really honestly loved it. And so Canada, we lived in Toronto and then we moved to Chatham, Windsor, and then Detroit. And uh, so we moved westward all the time through my childhood. And I think I was 13 when we got to Windsor and then um, my mom got sick. And um, she, in, in between my like 13 and 16, it was a pretty rough time. My dad actually wasn't living with us and it was difficult, but we moved to Detroit, um, I think when I was about 16, 17 and um, Detroit, Michigan, United States, got my American citizenship and, um, oh gosh, it's so warm. I'm gonna keep going. And um, so anyway, uh, we got to Detroit and uh, I was going to high school there, Hazel Park High School. Amazing, amazing. I still keep in touch with the women, actually, the chicks of 66. Graduated in 66, and um, they're on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody, if you're watching. And um, anyway, um, they. Uh, my mom was very sick by then. She had diabetes, but also she had cancer and had been a heavy smoker throughout the war. And so she was not, a, you know, not a healthy person. And she died when she was 50 years old. And um, 
I think I'm probably going to have to stop there because I think that was like the turning point. You know, that was the time in my life when um, I had to be a, I had to be independent. I was working. I was working um, in Detroit when the riots happened. I think that was in '69. I think I can't remember. Dates are not my strength. But um, I was working and really doing my best to keep everything together. It was during the Vietnam War. My brothers were, my one brother was in Vietnam. My other brother, who, they were, were all like, you know, 14 months apart, I mentioned. And the other one was in training when the war ended. So he didn't go, but army uh, based and I was by myself. And I had some friends, uh, but they were, you know, they were hippies and into their lifestyle. And I was very bohemian in my beliefs and I was very, I was very, um, I was a good girl and I didn't, you know, I followed all the rules and I was very, what's the word, disciplined. I was very moral. I had a, I had a value system. I was very pr um, private, but my, but I love quirky people and I loved, I love crazy artists and crazy friends and musicians. And I just, I surrounded myself with that kind of a, a fam, a group. They were my family. And, uh, you know, while I lived in Detroit, that was my world. But then I decided um, it was time to start fresh. So I had uh, at my mom's house, or the house we were living in, in Royal Oak was uh, sold. And I think we made like, you know, after everything was paid, including her funeral expenses and everything, I think I had like a hundred, we six, I think it was $64 in my pocket um, after I bought a, a, a flight a ticket to Colorado. And I landed in Denver airport with my little dog Barney and with $64 in my pocket and started a new life there and in Colorado. And that was really the beginning of a whole wonderful new chapter of my life. You can see that my, the chapter up till then, up to my sort of 20, I don't know, 22nd or so birthday was pretty rough. Um, rough in the sense that I learned a lot and that I, I had some great opportunities to learn about people and about life and about myself. So I was in Boulder. I'll tell you my story about how I got my first job there. <laughs> what happened? It was a great coincidence, a great story. But I'll stop here and just take a pause. I'm not sure whether I should... Um, release these all at once I probably I think I'll just release them as I go so this one will go up um, you know first and then I'll just join in with the second one I'll try to keep them a few days apart or maybe a week apart it's been really good doing this oh my gosh and by the way in that process I have answered a lot of your questions I, ha I truly have because a lot of people did ask about my childhood where I grew up where I went to school where you know what my what my uh, family was like so hopefully that's covered some of your questions about where Margaret started her life oh my goodness thank you so much for listening this is going to be hard to even publish because I've never ever 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 said all these words on a video in a format that's going to be there forever I don't think I said anything that wasn't true. Well, I know I haven't said anything that wasn't truthful, and hopefully there was nothing there that didn't um, exaggerate or misrepresent anything. Is how I saw it. It was my my world. So thanks again, everybody, for your kindness and for your sweet comments and kind compassion. Love you all. Thank you.